We're not taking you kids to see Five Nights at Freddy's. We've got Five Nights at Freddy's at home. Oh wait, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's actually is playing at home. Well, we're still watching Freddy's Fridays anyway. What you might be thinking is, what has the Asylum done this time? But, looking at the cover, and looking at the clips, I'm already thinking that our beloved Asylum is innocent in this endeavor. No, no, this has a distinct Winnie the Pooh blood and honey feel to it. Lo and behold, it is from Jagged Edge Productions, and from director Ben J. Williams, who did second unit work on the Winnie the Pooh movie, Movie and the upcoming Bambi the Reckoning? The hell? I joke, but thinking about it, there is framework for a revenge movie there. And I'll give Freddy's Fridays this, I do like the cover, but then you gotta ask, what's the plot? More killer animatronics? I hope not. Looking at this, it looks like we're too cheap to take the kids to showbiz pizza, so creepy Uncle Grossfarb puts on one of his costumes that he wears with hookers. I don't know, the plot is something about girls being sacrificed to these creatures. I think my creepy uncle may have done that too. Though it has scenes not in the country and on a street, plus there's extras, I'm not used to seeing buildings in one of these. Here, let's hang out in this dark alley with a suspicious man looking around as if he's double-checking that Batman isn't in the shadows. The ponytail's gonna cost you extra, honey. So he and his escort work out a deal where he's a gentleman and gives her his jacket instead. They are tempting fate. Nothing happened in the alley, so clearly this basement will be on the up-and-up. I've been in worse places. Where? The Beast's dungeon? It's so romantic, he already has the place set up to sacrifice her to the god of love, Eros the Ripper. He's got some poetry too, in the offspring of the Necronomicon and the book from Hocus Pocus. Not a bad effect though. On second thought, Todd here isn't trustworthy at all. He looks like he's the villain in one of those movies Pinhead was inserted into. But whatever, maybe this will turn into one of those nice love stories like the 365 Days trilogy. Whoop, nope. The chilly draft from the open basement killed the mood, as well as the appearance of evil Tigger and the killer clowns from outer space. I do like these masks better than the ones from Winnie the Pooh, and thus the sacrifice is complete. Like I'm watching Don't Go in the House if he went to the arcade instead of discos. It does cut away from the violence far less than the Five Nights movie. This goes on for a while, and I'm not gonna lie, there are some creepy shots here. I also like that the title could be serviceable if they wanted to make a Five Nights ripoff or a Freddy vs. Jason knockoff. Part 2 Jason is kind of there. Her friends aren't gonna rest until they find her. This is the only scene this character is in. They're in the conference room at the Chuck E. Cheese headquarters. They'll take care of this bad publicity. Or it's a police station. I don't know. Chuck E. Cheese can probably afford its own police after all the money I spent trying to win a pencil sharpener. And don't think the scene is over now. I can already tell this is gonna pad itself out to only 77 minutes. I've just been talking with this young girl, Connie. Her friend has gone missing and goes by the name of Anastasia. I know. We literally just saw them talk about this. Oh, this guy's gonna be a big help. I don't mean to be dismissive. But she's probably holed up somewhere with a needle in her arm waiting for her next paycheck. Or she got tangled up with the wrong guy. So why bother investigating? And he's the police chief. He straight up tells her, don't get your hopes up. Possibly about the movie. He was the villain in Cult of Humpty Dumpty. I've seen so many of these flicks that honestly, I do give bonus points when it isn't about people doing a weekend getaway in a secluded house and then monsters show up. 
It's still got some of the other problems. Here is another scene of Detective Lila being told most of the same info about the missing girl. Lila has experience in this field. She'll get flashbacks soon because she was the kidnapped girl they rescued in the Winnie the Pooh movie. She's played by Danielle Scott, who is pretty good in it. Even if the scene goes on so long, now they're talking about why guys pay for escorts until eventually they get to what they should have gotten to way sooner, the last man the missing girl was seen with. I guess the scene can be over now. Anyway, if that's everything, then I'll bet be off. There's actually one more thing. Oh my god, let's take a break. I'm sure they're gonna talk about the weather for five minutes. I bet that pizza tastes good. Mm -hmm. You've never seen a place like Showbiz Pizza Place. So come for the pizza, stay for the fun. We're back. Let's see how the scene with her boyfriend will go on forever. I don't know about this one, babe. I don't want you getting involved in this. She's a cop. It's her job. His advice is so good, he could be the police chief. I mean, just because he took her out that night, that doesn't make him the reason that she didn't come home. Maybe she just skipped out. Thanks for the tip. Case closed. But this case is so close to her because it turns out her sister also went missing when she was a kid. Has she tried checking her dreams? There might be some clues in there. Doesn't matter either way, that is never brought up again in the movie. And just when you think a scene ends, there's always someone else who comes in a split second after another leaves. I'm just trying to look out for you. Never liked him anyway. Who the hell are you? This is her roommate, Jess, and she needs her expertise. She's really good at social media, so Lila asks her to look up info on Todd. I do want you to look up someone online for me, though. A suspect. Okay. Do you not know how to look up someone online? How are you a cop? Although I do like that when the animals need another sacrifice, they just hand him the phone that I guess they keep in their pocket with escort sites queued up. She's got a break in the case. She found Todd's profile online. So now they know he was busted for insider trading. Considering Lila needed help with that info, I don't think she's in any position to be condescending. Insider trading. Yeah, like tips and shit. Yeah, I know what it is. I just didn't think you would. No offense. Uh, well, I am offended, actually. I do watch Billions, you know. See more about that in their next mockbuster, Gajillions. Smart killer, by the way. He put his location on Instagram for which club he's gonna be at this Friday. And then, no joke, the scene goes on even longer when the roommate talks about how she has a membership at the club and what people normally do at nightclubs. I'm surprised it actually didn't stop to do a clothes changing montage for when she's ready to go undercover at the club, where they're just doing drugs right in front of the entrance, and everyone is already sinister. I like gorgeous. <laughs> seen you here before. I've seen you too. You were also in Winnie the Pooh. Everyone here has the moves. Oh my god. Oh. oh. Oldest trick in the book. Just throw your drink on the girl. Totally an accident. Good Christ, someone turn a hose on these guys. Within a minute, she's mobbed by drunks and an angry girl thinking she's taking her man. No wonder people go home with the killer. He's the most normal one here. I like how there was this whole bit about her getting dressed up to go undercover, when really, she could have just waited outside in a car and tailed them. How has he not been caught? Don't mind what looks like a corpse sitting there. Come into my totally not human sacrifice room. Then we can see his whole routine again, where she has to read Latin out of the book. <laughs> if that's what you want. Yes, it's exactly what I want. One of the words she reads is the name Frederic, so we sort of have a title. 
This really does look like henchmen from various different Gotham City villains banding together to start their own cult. The death scenes are the best part still. Too bad I know that for the next 15 minutes, we're probably gonna get another meandering conversation about something like hot dog toppings. And where the hell have you been? Weren't you behind them? No matter, she found blood. Call for some backup. We have our man. Get his face out on the news. You can look at the evil book later. Call for help. But oh shit, the ghost of Buffalo Bill is onto her with his ghostly night vision. I'm sure she'll go to the right place once she leaves. There's been another murder, John. At least I think there is, and I know who it was. Nope, she goes home so she can tell her boyfriend about it. And she's taken the evidence with her? I mean, I started to read some of it at the club, but it's just, oh, oh, it just, I freaked out. You started to read some of it at the club? Did you stop for a drink? Oh, good, Jess the roommate is here. Why didn't you go with her or talk her out of it or something? She didn't go with her because she's not a cop, and she didn't talk her out of it because Lila is a cop. I'm actually glad Johnny the boyfriend is here because in one second, he goes from being the dumbest character to the smartest character. Shouldn't we um, call your wait, boss wait. or something? No, Especially wait. if there's been a murder. Yeah. I mean, did you just leave the body or...? And there you have it, the only smart thing anyone has ever said. Explain that, detective. Technically, there wasn't a body. But then how do you know it's been a murder? Because there was blood. Look, tons of it. So why bother calling it in? Oh wait, I'll let Johnny have that line. Shouldn't we call in the troops and go and arrest this guy then? <laughs> Why are you laughing? He's right! You're a shitty cop! I guess that topic is dropped. So their plan is to actually catch him in the act of sacrificing someone. That's how that works. You can't question someone until you actually see them kill a person. I mean, duh. So is she at least gonna take the book to her boss? I'm too tired to even think about it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this all to my boss tomorrow, but right now... Hi. I'm going to bed. Nope, she goes to bed. Were you expecting anything else? I think the killers know that Johnny is the only smart person here, so he has to go. Or the movie just doesn't want anyone around poking holes in it, so we'll poke holes in Johnny instead. Not that going to the chief helps. She lays out everything that she has found, and his theory is, well, it's an abandoned warehouse, so it was probably rats that left the blood. And even he is smarter than she is. And then they locked the door. I couldn't get in. So then, And that's when you should have called for backup. I know, sir. Do you? Do you know? I don't think you do. How does any murder ever get solved in this universe, even when they know his name? Right. Okay. Who's the guy? Todd Fisher. You know, also from Winnie the Pooh. She's received bad news about Johnny's death, though. No need to tell the chief. Just head on over there. They've got one officer checking out the scene. Dang, but no one saw anyone cut his head off, so I guess his head wasn't cut off, and it's not a crime scene anymore. We can still pad this out, like this very, very long shot of her on the ground, crying, till even she gets bored with the shot and just gets up and leaves. And see, I told you, you gotta look for clues in your dreams, just like in numerous movies with Freddy in the title. Of course, she doesn't really need her dreams to find clues. She could just look at, you know, the crime scene. She does, however, have a character arc. Resting comes after. After what? After we end this. Now she actually wants to solve the case instead of sleeping. They find out that the Freddy of the title is a demon who grants wishes for those who want extreme wealth, but in return, he demands human sacrifices every Friday. They get that info by just finding it online. I'd laugh, but that explanation makes more sense than the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. 
But all of that's lost when the scene again goes on for too long and includes genius lines, like when she says it's okay that she goes in alone because she's bringing her car this time, so she'll have a getaway. She's got a great plan. Get his latest sacrifice to leave, that way she can take her place. Hopefully the animals get back in time. Right now, they're cutting off more loose ends, like killing Jess before she uses her crack googling skills some more. We'll be right back. At this point, I'll be shocked if the chief closes any of these cases. Fancy restaurants versus Chuck E. Cheese's. There, nothing goes right. Oops. Well, what do you have to say for yourself? I should have said Chuck E. Cheese, please. A restaurant where a kid can be a kid. We're back, and there's a little problem with the next sacrifice. Where is it? Where's what? My book! My fucking book is always here! Not to mention, someone stole the condom out of his wallet and his ID. She's gonna take him down by having a shit-talking competition. They go on for a while like they're having a spoken word battle of just insulting each other back and forth. And I'm not sure who the winner is. Oh, perfection! Frederick! Excellent. Try that once more without speaking in spittle. I guess all you had to do to defeat Todd was just to steal the book and bring the wrong girl? Whatever, something makes them sacrifice Todd instead. Now she'll definitely go to the station. Nope, she goes home again. What? She's got to find the body of Jess somehow. Once she's done crying in the bathroom for a bit, then I'm sure she'll call it in. Or the chief will just show up himself. Thank God, we need someone else to act stupid. This only happens on Friday when you need to move. No, we need to call the police. We are the police. Oh, fuck, you know what I mean. We need to report this. It's like they're both playing pretend. Even in the last eight minutes, there's padding by again having her explain the whole plot of the demon Freddy once more. Then Chief Leslie Jordan will give her the help she needs. I'm giving you tonight. That's it. After that, I take you in and I question you. Well, at least someone is getting questioned. The plan is to go into the basement themselves and start swinging away with bats and gardening tools. Did they forget their guns at the club? I'm assuming they stopped for a drink first. Now the trap is set for them to do the same ending from Winnie the Pooh where they just beat the monsters for a while. Also, I legitimately don't know if this is supposed to tie in to the Humpty Dumpty film or if they just simply used the same costume. Sometimes it looks like someone possessed one of the E.T. porno aliens. But it is going for a pretty gory-ass finale. Just get to the sequel baiting. I know you want to. Ooh, two weeks later. What craziness is gonna happen now with this amazing sitting on the steps with coffee action? That is the only thing that happened in that scene. There, now we get the sequel bait. Why did it take two weeks for this to happen? Why did we need the step scene? This movie is terrible. It's a little different than some of the others, and there's sequences with a bit of style in them, but it's the characters that sink it. They're so dumb to the point to where they're the dumbest characters I've seen in a horror movie in a while. I knew I should have gone with the Hunger Games knockoff about a game show where people survive a hotel filled with dinosaurs. Real movie, by the way. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to make better use out of my time, like spending thousands more dollars at the arcade to get a second pencil sharpener after my first broke after five minutes. No props. Big Willie doesn't shit on another man's doorstep. 